chose cricket mainly because uh, it was a new game way back in 1971. I used to play table tennis and uh, basketball for my school and for the college. But uh, as that time, it was a lot of competition and uh, it was not easy to make a name for oneself. I thought a new game like cricket coming in to this country, let me try my hand at something. And I always liked cricket when I used to stay in the railway colony in Badwa Park. Every Sunday I used to play tennis ball cricket with the boys. And uh, I decided why not have a go. So I went to the Cricket Club of India where the nets were run by Mrs. Alu Bamji. And uh, I entered, I went for the entrance test and passed. And uh, hopefully, I think now looking back, it's long, long way, 20 years where I played for the country. I think I made the right decision. The problems of women's cricket initially were there. People used to wonder how could women play this game. Basically, it is played by men. And uh, we had a lot of snide remarks and uh, that women should be in the kitchen and not in the ground. Of course, it was a different matter for us because we knew we could play the game. We had problems with some of the male cricketers. Sandeep Patel also used to say that women should not play cricket. But uh, once he came to watch a game and then immediately he apologized and said that I take back my words and uh, he realized that women can play the game. There is a difference in the game where the men, it is more force and uh, power, while women, it is more grace and skill. Encouragement from my family, well, it was always there, right from the school days. My sister and I have always been in sports. My elder sister has also represented the country in cricket. And we've never had any problems. My parents both have encouraged us a lot. But uh, we've never ignored our studies as such. The basic rule put, laid down by the parents was that you have to complete the min bare minimum, that is SSE. And after that, you could do whatever you want. And uh, I don't think they ever came into the way, into our way or my way, that uh, you should not play any game and concentrate on a career or go for education because I think uh, today it is very important that uh, sports also is a career. More job opportunities are there for sports and uh, I think it is a better career than just, play, uh, just uh, being with your books. I think one must play and try and do something for the country. Getting the Arjuna Award has benefited me. I have uh, got a promotion from Western Railway, which immediately recognized my services. And uh, it has also brought a lot of facilities and recognition in the sense that the Maharashtra government uh, gave me the Maharashtra Gaurav Puraskar, which was one of the best awards to get after the Arjuna Award. Financially also, as well as uh, in uh, kind and uh, wherever I go if you are an Arjuna awardee it makes a big impact if you go to a government office for some work for some clearances when you go abroad or when you go to raise funds for the game it helps a lot to be an, uh, called an Arjuna awardee even sometimes when uh, you go to a theater and it, you don't get tickets and you say you're an Arjuna awardee and the manager definitely obliges you and helps you to get tickets. Nobody as such in my family, my forefathers or anybody played cricket or such, as such. My elder sister did play cricket, as I said. And uh, of course, she started playing after I came into the game. And uh, I started way back in 1971. But the federation, uh, the main federation was formed in 1974. The Bombay Women's Cricket Association was formed uh, in 1974, which is now known as Mumbai Cricket Association. And uh, we've had a lot of problems. Of course, the big, biggest problem is funds. Initially, right up till 1991, every girl selected to play for India had to pay from her pocket to go abroad to play for the country. And uh, 
it was only when uh, Mr. Sindhya, Mother of Sindhya, became the railway minister that uh, a lot of facilities were given to the women cricketers. Railways on a very large scale started recruiting women cricketers. And I think uh, Women's, Cricket uh, Women's Cricket Association of India is really thankful to Mr. Sindhya and the railways for promoting the game in such a way. Otherwise, it would have completely fizzled out like some of the other games who are, you know, struggling for funds and cannot come up to the international level. Secondly, after our performances in the 1993 World Cup and uh, domestic series after that, the basic media coverage that we are getting, by electronic media or the press, is been very encouraging and uh, that is helping sponsorship to come in. And uh, now every single match of ours is being shown on Doordarshan. And uh, I think that is one of the major steps which is helping to pick up this game. We've got the Women's World Cup in next year going to be held in India. And I'm sure with Doordarshan covering these matches and some other channels also, I think uh, sponsors will not shy away from this big event. I have been captain uh, on and off. Uh, I've played in three World Cups, 78, 82, and 93. I've captained in 78 and in 93. In between, I've been captain from 81 to 86. And uh, it's been on and off. It's been Shantaranga Swami and myself, two of us who have captained India for majority of the time. And uh, till 95. Uh, 93 was the last time I captain. 94, we've had a new captain. And uh, I've stopped playing international cricket uh, since 95. I had a very long run, 20 years, which is a record also for any women cricketer to have played. I incidentally also hold the highest number of wickets in test cricket, which is again a record. And uh, I think uh, both the records in men and women are being held by Indians. The male cricketer, of course, is Kapil Dev, who holds the highest number of wickets. And in women's cricket, it is me. Radha, what do you think of the current status of women cricket in India? Well, I think that uh, we have uh, indeed, for in the last uh, three to four years, made a lot of progress. Because uh, it's correct that in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a uh, peaking of women's cricket. There were a lot of tours, but thereafter, from about 85, 86 to 93, there was a real lull in women's cricket. For the last three, four years, we've been trying to revive women's cricket. And uh, in the last two years, in the international uh, arena, we are number one. We've beaten the top uh, three teams, that's England, Australia, and New Zealand in international competitions. What else do you think needs to be done to further improve it and to make uh, the more, much more players come out, you know? Yeah, actually, um, as far as international uh, cricket is concerned, we are doing well, uh, extremely well. But uh, also on the same hand, we are aware of the re ground reality that is there are very few players and uh, there are not enough uh, resources for the players. And uh, we feel that the most important thing uh, probably is to take uh, women's cricket to ground level, that is at you know, school level, much in a much more um, concentrated way. And uh, hope that uh, it will become as popular as, say, uh, other women's game as women's hockey or something. Do you think the uh, level of uh, exposure that women cricket gets in India uh, is not enough? Definitely. Uh, exposure in the sense, you see, the problem is uh, till about two years ago, women's cricket, the level was not uh, very high. Uh, in international competitions, we really didn't do very well. Therefore, there was, there was no interest, public interest in the game. Today, we have started doing better. Therefore, we've started getting more exposure. Doordarshan has been covering quite a lot of international competition. But we still have a long way to go. Uh, how long has you been in association with Diana Dulji and what do you think of her game? Well, uh, 
I'm uh, fortunate enough to have known uh, Dinah both as a player and a, as an administrator. I was a player myself, so I have seen her uh, when she was playing and in her peak in uh, late 70s and uh, from 1991 as an administrator since I have come in administration of the cricket, I have known her. Uh, I feel that, uh, honestly, Diana Adelji is, uh, is really a legend of Indian women's cricket, one of the legendary fi figures, and she definitely has contributed immensely in the growth of women's cricket at two levels. Firstly, as a player, she's contributed, she's one of our outstanding players, she's got several records to her name. Apart from that, her, she's been captain of the team also, Indian team. The other contribution which many people are not aware of are that it is she who is responsible for railways, Indian railways giving jobs to women cricketers. She was really, and she still is, a very good bowler. Uh, her level, I would say, is uh, she is cut above uh, most of the women bowlers I have seen. Her action, her style, her thought process is indeed remarkable. But if I was uh, on the Cricket Control Board of India, I would like to bring about one change that is transparency, which everybody is demanding today in a democracy. A lot of doubts have been set in the minds of public, and uh, especially after the World Cup, where the selection of the team is being questioned, that quota system is being used, and uh, being a player, I know sometimes the pressures are there on the selection committee, and uh, one has to go by it sometimes. A player of good, uh, with good talent and good uh, performance has to make way sometimes for a person who is not up to the mark. But uh, I think a little more transparency by the Men's Cricket Control Board should be there and because this is one game which is followed very, very widely by this public, not only in India but all over the world. Every move that they make is uh, reported, is uh, recorded on television. So I think uh, instead of earning a good name, the good work that they've been doing, because it's one of the be most well-organized uh, federations in the country and among the one of the richest in the world, I think uh, this sort of unnecessary criticism is not right and that they should come out in the open and solve everybody's problems, you know, the doubts that are there in the mind and help. I think uh, the President Secretary Anuradha Dutt has a lot of hard work to do and uh, she's got a major job on her hands. It's difficult for her for, uh, to run the association single-handedly. I think what she needs is a good team to function and uh, chart out, delegate powers to certain committees and uh, start work right from now and help, you know, publicize this event uh, from now so that there's no sponsorship problems and uh, I only hope that it's a great success.
Women's cricket in India has uh, definitely improved uh, during the past two, three years. Uh, I believe a couple of years back, they won a triangular series tournament in New Zealand, uh, which is a very great success as far as women cricket of uh, India is concerned. What else do you think needs to be done to further improve the standard? Well, uh, in cricket, uh, you have to work hard at every level in uh, every aspect of the game. I think they should be prepared physically, mentally, psychologically and uh, technically perfect to get uh, better performance. How long have you known Diana Adelji and what do you think of her game? Roughly about 13 years. Uh, but uh, I used to see her while I was in college and uh, the way she used to bowl and the way she now bowls I like it very much and uh, she has maintained a status which uh, most of the girls cannot maintain. She has sacrificed a lot. Uh, you can imagine at the age of 40, she is still vying for top honours in the country. She wants to play at the national level and uh, why shouldn't she play when she is fit and uh, she is bowling so well at this time? I don't think uh, there are many girls you can match her. At the age of 40 years, she's still going strong. What would a woman cricketer need to get into the Indian team? Well, first and foremost, she has to have a good game. She has to have talent. She has to learn to do hard work. And uh, of course, besides all this, I shouldn't be saying this, but I think one does need a good godfather or godmother in this case. And uh, I think, but 90% of the cases have been on pure merit. Every game has one or two cases where you had, uh, you know, cases which do not deserve, and, but are on the team just for a trip or something. Some of the great moments which I recollect now have been two matches, of course, uh, both way back in 1976 against the West Indies one at Patna, which is the only test match India has ever won. And uh, we had a crowd of about 25,000 watching that match. And uh, we were in a very good position. We required only 55 runs to win on the last day. We were certain of a victory. And celebrations had already started in the dressing room when the openers went out to bat. And uh, before, we very soon, it. Uh, we had lost five wickets for 25 runs and suddenly the panic was, panic buttons were pressed in the dressing room and I went out to bat when my colleague Susan Itacheria, the last of the recognized batsmen was there on the crease and uh, she came up to me and uh, said that just hang on, let us not panic and uh, just play out. We had a lot of time to our disposal and uh, slowly, steadily we built the innings up again and it was a great moment of history and I'm glad that at that moment my bat was responsible for hitting the winning stroke and the, the roar that erupted after that shot was hit, I hit a four and we won the test match. It was, it's still, I can recollect that sound even today. I've normally visualized this only in men's cricket, you know, with the crowd erupting, with great uh, victory pro processions and all. And uh, it was the invasion that took place after the match was over. I lost my gloves, I lost my bat. And uh, the jubilation that was there amongst everybody. And uh, normally the journey that takes the, from the stadium, the bus journey the, from the stadium to the hotel, which was hardly 15, 20 minutes, took over 45 minutes because the crowd was on the road blocking and dancing and celebrating. It was one of the most uh, memorable moments of my life and I can never forget that. The second uh, most uh, memorable thing was uh, in 1976 again, in, New Ze uh, in Lucknow again. This was a series against New Zealand when I achieved the highest number of wickets to be taken in an innings, when I took seven for 76. And uh, I was very, very happy in that match. Then I went on to take 11 wickets 
in both the innings, which is again a record in my name. And uh, at that time, air travel was a very rare for, thing for a woman cricketer. And uh, then General Secretary, Mr. M.K. Sharma, offered me an air ticket to fly back from Lucknow to Bombay. And I was really, really thrilled that I could come back by air to Bombay. It was one of my first air trips I had. And it was a real experience to be up in the skies. And uh, I think these are the two great moments. Of course, I cannot take away the pride I got when uh, I broke the world record in 84, when I broke Mary Dugan's record, when I had uh, Trish Watson uh, LBW in Delhi. And uh, I completed the 78th wicket, which is uh, the world record for highest number of wickets in test cricket, and then went on to achieve the 100th wicket at Cuttack. And uh, so far, no other woman cricketer has achieved the 100, 100 wicket mark. And I'm proud that an Indian is holding the highest number of wickets in men and women's cricket. And I hope this record lasts for a long, long time. And uh, it always stays with the Indians. The juniors that are there just now in the team, I'd appreciate it. They've really worked hard. They're, they must realize playing for the country is something which one really treasures a lot. And uh, it's only achieved after a lot of hard work, dedication, sacrifice. And uh, it is a rare achievement, and one must honor, get the feeling of honor to represent your country. The awards come uh, if you perform well, if you do well in the game, you're sure to get your rewards. And uh, I'm thankful for all the support I got from my family, from my office, that's the Western Railway Sports Association, from the Railway Sports Control Board. And uh, I'm still looking forward. I still play domestic cricket. I lead the Indian Railways in the national championship, which we are national champions for the last 10 years in a row. And I hope uh, I can continue to give service. And as and when, if the country requires, I'm ever ready to play for them.